It's time now for the Words of Knowledge broadcast with Pastor Alan Harrington, pastor of the World's Church of the Living God, located at 2110 Glass Street, Chattanooga, Tennessee. Now, here's Pastor Alan Harrington. Because everybody needed some type of salvation. Yes. And he sent Jesus. Yes, sir. Sent his son. Yes, sir. And he shed his blood on Calvary's cross and people reject it. They reject blood, the blood atonement, blood sacrifice for church membership. We think that because we join the church or sign the road book or get baptized, okay, praise the Lord, I'm all right. It takes more than that. Because we are all born in sin. And we're going to read. Let's just read this quickly. Romans 3. Romans 3. Mm -hmm. Let's see. Yeah. Starting with the 10th verse. This right here is the state of every human being. Church human beings. Real bad, thugged out, hard human beings. Self-righteous human beings, the Pharisee that looked down his nose and said, I think I'm not even like this publican, that human being. This is the natural state of man, no matter who they are, where they come from. This is what God sees. He sees somebody who needs him. Somebody who's totally without God. And it says, go ahead and read. Romans 3.10. As it is written, there is none righteous. No, not one. Now, un understand that now. Just, just keep reading. We're not going to comment on, on all of it. None. Just make sure you understand. When he says none, he means none. I think it was David, our son Solomon, when he was offering up sacrifices to God, looking at all the good stuff people brought to offer to God, and, and he was praying that even when, when, when things are sort of going south with, with your people, and, and, and they, in their hearts, they repent, and they turn to you and, 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 front, and, and view you and look toward this holy place and want to build a temple, they're dedicating the temple. He said, hear thou from heaven, and forgive their sins because there's none on earth that does good and sins not. Nobody. 
And David, he was, he was a man of God. He, he loved God. But David recognized that without God, he, him, he was no more than a sinner himself. And he proved it. Yes, sir. So there is none. And oh man, I remember thinking, you know, years before I ever met Jesus. God. I thought going to heaven or hell depended on how much good or bad you did. So you thought if you did more good than bad, you, you miss it. And I was so disappointed, I was so scared, because it just didn't seem like I could do good. <laughs> I just couldn't get it right. I just couldn't do it. And to find this, to hear this, that there is none that doeth good, no, not one. Nobody. And people think that they're going to heaven because they're such good people. Even because they think they're such good Christians. They're going with Jesus. Go ahead, brother. There is none that understandeth. Mm -hmm. none, uh, go ahead. Understands what, understands what? About the ways of God. The ways of God. They don't understand God's character. God's way of doing things. People don't really understand his word. Go ahead. There is none that seeketh after God. True. Read it. They are all gone out of the way. Out of the way? They are all, every human being has gone out of the way of God. And that's where repentance comes in. <laughs> to turn from your own way to the way of God. And yes, the goodness of God must lead you to repentance. No matter what you think or feel about something, God has got to be so precious to you that when his goodness does fall on you and, and come to you, oh God, that it's just a yearning in your heart to turn from your own way to the way of God and to truly say and mean it not my will, but thy will be done. Your will be done in my life. Here I am, whatever you want to do in my life. Use me. I wonder what the early saints, the early church felt like. For the name, loving God so much. For the name of Jesus, slaughtered, slandered, persecuted, talked about. Betray everything. Ripped apart by lions, killed by Roman soldiers and gladiators. But they love God. And they still felt, if this is your will for my life, so be it. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. If some of us were, were the early church, God have mercy. Yes. And Isaiah says the same thing. And we're going to talk about that just a little bit. Go, go ahead, brother. This, they are all this, gone, this is a human. They are all gone out of the way. Mm -hmm. They are together become unprofitable. Worthless. No matter what they do in life, no matter how many millions or billions you amass here on, on, on this planet Earth. And that's what people are looking for. That's what preachers are preaching. Yeah. I'm saying, yeah, you're gonna preach about, you're gonna preach the gospel. Good. That's the gospel of Jesus Christ. And you're gonna preach the good news that goes along with it. God love you, bless you, keep you, take care of you, help you, show you how to prosper. How to keep things in perspective yes, sir. as you prosper. He'll do, nothing wrong with that. But when that becomes your doctrine, when that becomes your teaching, and I think Paul wrote Timothy, he, he, when he was talking to him, he said, hey, you, he said, you avoid them kind of people that think that gain is godliness. 
I don't show, show nothing. Go, go ahead. Their throat is an open supper. Go ahead, brother. With their tongues, they have used deceit. Don't, oh man. Go, go ahead. The poison of apps is under their lips. We'll poison you in a minute. What's an asp? It's, a, it's like a viper. Yes, sir. A very poisonous snake, deadly snake. Yes, sir. And just think back now, when and whose character have you assassinated? The poison of ash is under their lips. Come on, let's, let's read. Whose mouth is full of cursing and bitterness. Oh, man, don't, don't mention it. Go, go, read it, brother. Their feet are swift to shed blood. Yes. Destruction and misery are in their ways. Now, without Christ, are either to rebel against God, his word. There is nothing in your path waiting on you but destruction. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yeah. Jesus told the, the religious sect at that time, he told them, if you don't believe that I am he, you're going to die in your sins. That's the worst thing that can happen to anybody. And you're going to leave. And it might not be 50 years from now. It might not be 50 days from now. It might not be 50 hours from now. We don't know. We, don't, we never know. None that doeth good, no, not one. All gone out of the way. Everybody become unprofitable to the, in the sight of God, mouth full of cursing and bitterness, destruction and misery are in their ways. And the way of peace have they not known. Ain't that the truth? There is no fear of God before their eyes. That's, that's good. No fear of God before their eyes. And people don't. That's, sometimes you can be watching television, enjoying it, if, you know, when you have a chance to. And somebody will say something crazy. I have never seen the like. Crazy about the Lord. Folk got to the point they'll say anything about God. Anything. Got all kind of programs on. Satan program. Lucifer. Just God have mercy. Yes, sir. People don't feel God. Folks make, make fun of God's ministers. They make fun of the church. Make fun of Jesus. I'll listen for No. Uh-uh. Now click it right off in, in a heartbeat. Yes, sir. This is the natural state of man. Yes, sir. Yeah. This is a lost person. This is the best. Do you know the very best? Let's, let's get Isaiah 64. Then we're going to, we might stay in Isaiah after that. 64 and 6. Isaiah. This is the state of man at his best in the sight of God. Isaiah 64, 6. But we are all as an unclean thing. We are all. We are all. All of us who? All human beings. We are. He's not talking about animals. And this person speaking is a man of God. A prophet of the Lord. That gets up and say, yea, the Lord, thy God said this and And surely it will come to pass. We are all as all of us, everybody, as an unclean thing. And all our righteousness are as filthy rags. All of our righteousnesses, all of our good deeds. All, listen, all of our tides. You mean God don't want me to? Yes, he does. Do you know the Bible says that even the plowing of the wicked is sin? Uh, it is. God does nothing good. All of our righteousnesses, all of our good deeds, all of our, our preachings, all of our singing in the choirs, all, all of our just doing goods, all of our never cursing, never buying, all, all of our good stuff, all of our, all our, our missionary work, all of our good stuff, Without God in your life. Go read it. But we are all as an unclean thing. Mm -hmm. 
and all our righteousness are as filthy rags. Whoa. That's it. All of our righteousness. So why ain't that bad a person? See, we love to think like that about ourselves. I'm not that bad. Us, every human being, unclean thing, and all of our righteousness to God, the Bible says, are what? As filthy rags. As filthy rags. The best life, the best, the very best, best, bestest of your mind, all of our good deeds in the sight of God. Without Christ being in it, without Jesus being there, without God's anointing, without God's work yes, being in us, when God looks at it, it's worse than just dirty, nasty, filthy, snotty, sleazy, slimy, maggoty, garbage can rags. That's what God sees when he sees a natural human. A person in need of mercy. A person whose filthy life and mind is, needs to be washed by God's word. So you can't stand on what you're not, you're not, I'm not such a bad guy. I'm not such a bad woman. Forget that. Re read this, brother. We, we're going we're gonna to go. You know and me. we all do fade as a leaf. Uh-huh. And our iniquities, like the wind, yes. have taken us away. That's good. That's, that's good. Life fading away. And people, sometimes people don't even know why. They need the Lord in their life. No matter what you do, no matter where you go, always seems like something is missing. You know why? Because there is something, someone missing. That's the key, to believe in him. Brother, let's read this. And we're going to get ready to go home. Isaiah 53. Yes, Who hath believed our report? Go ahead. And to whom is the arm of the Lord revealed? I, I guess we could ask the same question today. This prophet, the man of God, Isaiah, he got the report from God. The prophets had been prophesying. The apostles later had, had been teaching it and prophesying it, that Jesus came to save sinners. He was going to provide salvation. And he did. And when you preach sometimes or when you talk to people, when you witness to people, whether it's on your job at home or you, you tell people, hey, you really need to think about your life and, and give consideration to accepting Jesus as, as your savior. You know, when you, and just and when you tell me how, how good God is and, and what Jesus came to do, you wonder, but it proves out, if they really believe the report. Go ahead. For he shall grow up before him as a tender plant mm -hmm. and as a root, root out of a dry ground. Root out of a dry ground. Jesus grew up in Israel. <clears throat> Raised by, I say, his stepfather. Well, he was handling his father, God's business. And that's what we should all be about. Not a, it's not about anything in anybody else, but to be about the business of the father. The business of God. He 12 years old, grew up in Israel, attending out of the tribe of Judah. Read it. He hath <laughs> no form nor comeliness. Uh-oh, go ahead. And when we shall see him, there is no beauty that we should desire him. There was nothing outstandingly unique about the physique of Jesus. He was an ordinary looking man. He wasn't a beautiful man like, like people have the pictures. Rugged looking. Not unusually handsome or nothing, nothing like that. That wasn't Jesus. The word, the message of God, the love of God displayed through this man. Jesus. Praise God Almighty. Let's read it, brother. He is despised and rejected of men. Uh-oh a man of sorrows, and acquainted with grief. Do you think Jesus is not despised today? The real Jesus is. He is despised today. People reject him today. You think people welcome a, 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 a Jesus that, that preaches 
forgiveness, that preaches love, that, 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 that preaches unity, or just whatever. Think they want to hear from that Jesus? <laughs> no. Jesus is despised and rejected today. He was then and he, was to, he is today. Go ahead. And we hid as it were our faces from him. Hallelujah. He was despised and we esteemed him not. We didn't consider who he was. We didn't give him respect. The disciples all left him. When the, when the Roman soldiers came after him and the high priest and all came after him in, in the garden, Jesus was left alone. So we hid it as it were our faces from him. Peter even denied it. Let's read. We're going to close out. Surely he has borne our griefs. Thank you, Father. And carried our sorrows. He's carried our sorrows. He's born, listen, he's born our griefs, our pains, our, our sufferings, our, our sicknesses. All illness, sick, disease. He paid for all of it. There at Calvary. He has borne our griefs, carried our sorrows, but what? Yet we did esteem him stricken. Hallelujah. Smitten of God and afflicted. And afflicted. That whole process was the doing of God. That, the, the, the whipping process. The beatings, the plucking out of his, his beard. Chastising him. Ridiculing that, that God did it. Read it, read, brother. But he was wounded for our transgressions. Yes, he was. Thank you, Father. He was bruised for our iniquities. Not, not his. Jesus had no sin whatsoever. He was totally without sin. He was wounded for our transgressions. Go ahead. The, the chastisement of our peace was upon him. Thank you, Father. And with his stripes, we are healed. Thank you, Father. With his stripes. We quote that more than we do him being wounded for our transgression. We, yeah, because, yeah, we all, you better. We, we all want healing. We want to be healed. Let's try to stay healed. Let's try to walk in healing. Let's try to walk in this atonement of God. He suffered for our sins, for our iniquities, he paid the price for our sins and the shedding of blood. See, the shedding of blood is for what? The remission of sins. <clears throat> his stripes, with his stripes, we are healed. Read it. We're about to close out. All we like sheep have gone astray. There it is. Read it. We have turned every one to his own way. Mm -hmm. And the Lord has laid on him the iniquity of Praise us all. Praise God. Tenth verse. Go to tenth verse. We're about to close out. Yet it pleased the Lord to bruise him. Listen. It pleased God. It pleased God to bruise Jesus like that. Had a purpose. For God so loved the world. And to reject that, to do you think God is going to save you any other kind of way? You think God is going to overlook everything that he's laid out? The crucifixion, the death, the beating, the chastising of his son. The humi humiliation of his son. Yes, and save you because you join the church. Or because you preach or because you sing the choir. Because Whatever. Yes. It's all got to be through the Lord Jesus Christ. Yes, We're going to close out. Marie, let's, let me read Romans right quick. This is nothing to be, to be taken lightly. This is very important. So we're going to read this and, and close out Romans 10 and, and 8. So with the 8th verse. Yes, sir. Listen Romans very carefully. 10 and 8. But what saith it? The word is not thee. The word. Praise God. Go ahead. Even in thy mouth and in thy heart, that is the word of faith which we preach. The word of faith. Why is it called the word of faith? Because it's calling on you and promoting you to, to have all your faith put in a person. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. So the word of God is nigh thee. In, it's in your mouth and in your heart. In your heart. You can feel it. Read it. Ninth verse. 
That if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus. That if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus and shall believe. Go ahead. And shall believe in thine heart that God hath raised him from the dead. Thou shalt be saved. Thou shalt be. Not maybe. You shall be. You do this open confession that Jesus Christ is your Lord and your Savior. And you believe in your heart that God, see this, this, this covers the whole gospel, this scripture right here. Yes, sir. That they crucified Jesus <coughs> on that cross. Jesus gave up the ghost. He gave his life. He told Pilate, one of them that, it's, no man take my life, but I give it. I give my life. He was sent as a sacrifice and he knew it. And he died on, the, on, on that cross. They took him down and buried him in a tomb, in, in, in a cave-like, a sepulcher. Buried him in that tomb for three days and three nights. Jesus was dead. Dead. He was not in a coma. He was not under some kind of anesthesia, anything like that. Jesus was dead. He just didn't wake up feeling like he had enough rest. Let me get up. It's been three. He didn't have an alarm clock. He was dead. He could not have raised himself up. Yes, sir. But on the third day of his death, the spirit of almighty God yes, entered back into that lifeless corpse. And raised up Jesus from the dead. He just didn't get up by himself. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. God kept his promise. Yes, sir. That if Jesus would come here and stand on man's bond. He knew what was facing him. Separation from God. Crucified. Dead. Buried. He knew what was facing him. God promised. You let your blood be shed for the sins of the world. On the third day of your death, I'll raise you up. Yes, sir. And the Bible tells me that for the joy that was set before him. Yes, sir. It wasn't the cross, but for the joy set before him. Yes, sir. He endured all that. Yes, sir. He endured the cross. Yes, sir. Endured the shame. The sur he endured that because what he saw before him was us. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. He saw us. Yes, sir. He knew what his death would bring. He knew what his resurrection would bring. Yes, he trusted God. Yes, sir. So on the third day of his death, God raised him up, and you got to believe that. That Jesus was dead in that tomb, and God raised up Jesus on the third day of his heart. And if you believe that, that he died for you, he shed his blood for you, and on the third day of his death, that God raised him up, if you believe that, in your heart of hearts, the Bible says, you shall be saved. Yes, sir. You've been listening to the Words of Knowledge broadcast with Pastor Alan Harrington. If you would like to write Pastor Harrington, send all correspondence to Words of Knowledge, P.O. Box 11005, Chattanooga, Tennessee, 37401. That's Words of Knowledge, P.O. Box 11005, Chattanooga, Tennessee, 37401. Tune in next week for another Words of Knowledge broadcast.